Today I'm going to show you how I make these cute little sort of heart picture frames. See how there are two heart cookie cutters put together and then you can put a picture in. This is just from a magazine and I on this one I put a magnet so you could put it like on a refrigerator or something and on this one I put a hole so that you could hang it as an ornament. So I um uh, you can do this with any cookie cutter that you want. I just happened to decide to do it with a heart cookie cutter. So I've got rolled out here a slab that's probably about, I, I guess it's probably about an eighth of an inch thick. It's pretty thin because you're going to put together two cookies and the, um, and the, the part in between. So I've got this heart cookie cutter and I'm going to, I put, I rolled out my slab. I've compressed it on both sides and taken out all the extra texture. And then I'm going to just take my cookie cutter and I'm going to cut a bunch of hearts right here. And I'm using this pressed down so that, um, uh, I don't hurt my hand. Whoever gave me that suggestion, it was a great idea. So I'm going to make a bunch of these. And I'm going to try to get as many as I can because I need two for every little mini picture frame. And then I'm going to let these, I'm going to put them between two boards. I've got um, what's this stuff called wall board. And I'm going to put it between two boards and let them dry up a bit so they've stiffened up because this is pretty soft right now. And you can see it's very floppy. And the reason for that, that I'm going to do that is because I want, um, I want them to be a little stiffer because of warping. So I've had some of these warp a little because there's a portion of it that doesn't have uh, any clay between them. So by doing, um, having them be a little stiffer, I'm hoping that won't happen. Okay, so you don't need to watch me do all this. I'll be back when they've dried up some. So these hearts have dried up. They're... Um, stiff enough they don't really bend so they're a leather hard you can do them um at a hard leather you you, you just want them to be stiff enough that they don't bend because of all the manipulating we're going to do to this to put them together so i'm smoothing out the edges you can pick one to be the bottom and one to be the top and in this case i'm going to make this one the bottom okay and for the bottom, I'm going to put my stamp on it before I do anything else. So here's my stamp. And think about where you're putting your signature, because if this is going to be a magnet, you're going to put the magnet up here. So, or And if it's going to be a, a, a um, like an ornament, you're going to put a hole somewhere up here. So you, you want to put your stamp down at the bottom. Okay, so that one's all ready to go. Now this side is going to be the top. So what I'm doing is I'm using this one and a half inch cookie cutter to cut out the center. You could use really any shape you wanted, but I, I like the circle. Um, and then you want to line it up so that there's a little bit of edge all around so that you have a place for the frame. And then you just press down. And I don't like to waste things if I can help it. So what I'll do is use this with a stamp, but it's a little dry, so I'm going to just give it a little water and then hopefully by the time we're done with everything else this will be damp enough that we can I mean that we can press a uh, stamp into it um, maybe it'll be a little less leather hard <laughs> so I'm going to smooth out the hole because this is the frame we want it to be nice where the um, piece will go and then I'm going to take my serrated rib and that I use as a um, scoring tool and this is the bottom so I'm going to score up to where I'm going to put the wall that's going to hold the top part up so so you want to have a good enough size gap to slip a picture in there and then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom I mean the top <laughs> top bottom get them all confused okay all right so now I've got here a little strip of clay. This is a little wide, but it's about, um, it's between an eighth and a quarter of an inch in height. And you don't, if you make it, the problem is you don't want it to be too wide because if it's too wide, it's going to 
you're going to see it where the hole is. So you want to make sure it's no wider than any of these spots over, you know, all along here. And you want to leave a little gap so that the picture has a place to go. All right. So then we're going to take this strip and at and here so you can get a look. It's about, it's a little more than a eighth, but not quite a quarter. And you can do whatever size you want, depending on what kind of height you're, you want between the two pieces. Um, all right, so we're going to slip. And I like a good amount of slip with this because the pieces are on the dry side. Let's make this end a little cleaner. All right, so we're going to start on this side. And let me move this. And I'm going to just place this down and go up to the end of the heart there and wiggle it in place and get it as close to the edge as you can. It's, you won't, I find that I can't smooth it out perfectly, but it doesn't seem to matter. Then you're going to cut it off right where the side, you know, right at the tip, the side of the heart. So let me show you that close up. So now, if you um, you want to press down while we can, while we don't have the big piece, the other piece on there, and get it as attached as possible. Okay, and then for the other side, we're just going to take oops, um, got rid of some of that slip in all my manipulating. We're going to push that up against there and do the same thing over here on this side and cut it off. And so now you see there's going to be this gap in there for where the picture would slide in. So, so depending on what cookie cutter shape you use would depend on how you do, where you, how you frame that top, uh, you know, how you leave this gap open. Because like, let's say you wanted to do a, a, um, a mitten, you might leave it open all the way up to here so you can slide the picture in. Kind of depends on what you're going for. So now I'm going to just, while I don't have the top on yet, I'm going to try to get these in the right spot because you want, as I said, as close to the edge as possible. Smooth it out a little, squeeze them down, make sure they're in there nice and secure. Okay, now we're going to take our serrated rib. We're going to serrate here. And before you place it, it might be a good idea to make sure that you're not going to show. See, so on this one, I have a little bit, I don't know if you can see it, it's a little little too wide on either side. So I, I did look at this and think it looked wide. So I'm going to cut off some of this. Yeah, that's better. And a little bit on this side. And hopefully you won't have to do that if you make your piece skinny enough. But apparently I did not on this one. Oh, so that's good. So you can see a way to fix it if it's uh, okay. And the good thing is you're not really going to see any of this, but we can smooth that out. And I guess you could take a um, um, one of these... Uh, Make sure it's in there. One of these, uh, what do you call it? Um, these. <laughs> the name is escaping me at the moment. Okay, let's check it again. Looks like it'll be okay. So now we're going to slip everything. Now at this point, you can choose, depending on how soft the top piece is, you could choose to um, put newspaper in first or do it afterwards because these are pretty stiff. I'm going to just place them first and then I will put the newspaper in there. So the easiest way to line it up is to push your hand right here at the corner and then lift it up again, being very conscious of not pressing down here at this part in the gap, right? And then just squeeze it tight, smooth it out, get that slip to come out. You know, you have a good Good, good connection. Okay, that looks pretty good. 
and uh, you can see there is a gap, but it's good to have it um, have some newspaper in there just so that it, it in case it slumps a little in the drying. Now you can leave the newspaper in here when you fire it in the kiln or you could take it out. I usually take it out, but it won't burn out in the firing. So it's up to you what you want to do. So I'm just going to take some newspaper and I'm going to slide it in here. And sometimes I add more. You want to get it down to the bottom if you can. To there. Let's add a little bit more. And there you go. So now you let this dry. You can do a little cleanup if you want to on the edges. And um, that'll be it for that part. So the next part is the hole or if you're going to make this a magnet. So let's say it's going to be um, a, uh, you want to have a, um, you want it to be more of an ornament. So you can take your hole cutter and slide the paper over a little bit. So you can choose to either put it, like on this one, I put it in the base like that, but I'm going to do it over here in the corner on this one. So I move the paper over a little and I can be really careful. So you take your hole cutter because this is where you could just wreck it completely. And I'm very carefully making the hole on the top, which is going through to the bottom, but I'm going to have to make the hole on the bottom uh, half too. So here we go. So that's the top. I'm going to mess with that a little bit more because I'm being so delicate. careful. And then the bottom, and look, I'm getting crumbs all over everything, but that's okay. And then we'll do the top again. Like I said, after all that hard work, you don't want to screw it up here, so be careful. Okay, so now we have a hole going all the way through, and I'm going to move the newspaper back so that, it, and then later on I'll clean it up a bit. Uh, it looks like I might actually have a crack here, so let's hope it's not. I can't really tell right now. Okay, so then that's the way you want to do it. If it's a hole, if you want to do a magnet, you'd, you'd put this on after you're all done firing. So for glazing, what I did is I left this part bare, and the first time I didn't wax them, but now I'm going to wax the center here. And I left it bare because I didn't want to put any extra glaze in there that might stick the two pieces together. And you can see this one slumped a tiny bit, but not enough to be an issue. So that's good. And, and then I glaze, you know, on the sides. So there you go. So the last thing is what do you do with that little piece you don't want to waste? So I will smooth the circle out. Right. And then I've got this bisque stamp over here. And sometimes I just use these for glaze tests, but if I like them enough, they might end up being a magnet. So I'm going to stand up so I can put some pressure on, wiggle it around. Sometimes they crack. Oops. Missed that section. Okay. So now I have like a little bis stamp. I could... Uh, I could either use this as a test, and if I really like the way it came out, I might put a magnet on the back of it, or a hole in it, and it'd be like a little ornament. So you can decide what you want to do with those kind of things. So that's it, and um, I hope you give this a try with any kind of cookie cutter, not just a heart, and enjoy it, and I will see you next time.